Hi guys, Larry from Oregon Coast, it's June 15th, and uh, doing my third update here. Let's start from the front. That's my cracky, no air. Middle one, regular DWC. And way right behind all that stuff is the composty hydroponics. So, all right, I'm gonna bring you in for a closer look. All right, this is the cracky. And about a week after uh, my last video, we ended up with uh, two weeks of really cold weather. And I started running into a couple of issues. Uh, basically what was going on is that my leaves felt like um, almost like wet tissue paper. This one's dried up now. And uh, I wasn't real sure what, what was going on. So I ended up going uh, on the internet and I ended up trying to fig uh, figure it out that um, I was getting nitrogen uh, toxicity. I hope that's how you say it. But basically uh, my nutrient level is too high. And the guy also told me on the forum to, um, you know, make sure to check my pH. So I am, end up getting a uh, general hydroponics uh, nutrient test kit. Test the water, and I was well below four. And my, and then I also bought a uh, ppm meter. My ppm meter was uh, right around 2,400, and I was only going about two thirds for the minimum strength that uh, set on on the package. All right, I got my pH uh, straightened out. Um, end up getting also some. Uh, pH up and pH down with my test kit. So right now the cracky I'm running about 5.5 to 6.0 which is pretty much where I want to be. Alright and the <clears throat> MHP Gardener he has a, a video on the cracky method and he, he can explain this process better than I can. But um, After you're, you're done watching the video if you go to this, his uh, descriptions it will have a link to be a cracky. So um, it's pretty good reading. So technically this isn't a cracky. Um, and he'll give the size of the reservoir that you will need for like a tomato. But, um, if I understand it right, basically uh, the cracky method is, is that you just fill the, the reservoir once with water and the nutrients. And then, uh, and then you just let it go until harvest time. You don't top it off or anything. So I guess this is a kind of a modified cracky, I guess you'd call it, or just a no air DWC. But uh, so far it's doing pretty good. Now here's some of the issues that was left over from the from the leaves, from the low pH and the high uh, ppm. And it definitely helped getting that ppm meter. So now I know exactly what where I'm at and how much um, I'm using. Shit, sorry, I got you guys going all over the place. But now uh, it's looking really, really good. Getting really good growth. It's a little smaller than the, uh, the regular DWC, but for uh, it's really holding its own. Really happy how far it's, how well it's doing. I have a uh, small greenhouse, so it's really hard for me to get a really good view of this thing. But uh, this is the regular DWC, and it's uh, growing like crazy. I got flowers everywhere. You got a few tomatoes coming in, and. Uh, I was having the same issue too. I was having uh, the leaves were just uh, in bad shape, and uh, luckily I got the pH uh, under control and I got the nutrients dropped way down. So right now I've been running the DWC right around uh, four to five hundred ppm's. That seems pretty low, but uh, so far it's starting to work. So I'm starting to show a little bit of signs of a uh, nutrient deficiency. So. Probably the next day or two, I'm going to probably bump this up, probably up to 800 and see how, how it looks. Alright, here's my baby, a little compost T, uh, T1. And this guy, he's about a third of the size <laughs> compared to the other ones. But he's doing really good. I'm really happy. Um, I darn near killed this thing. I darn near killed it. Um, I think I got a couple of pictures if I can find them and I'll, I'll throw them up there right now if I, if I have them. Well, I end up uh, putting some pH down into, uh, into the reservoir here. And it comes in a quart size, so in the instructions it says uh, add a little bit. Well, uh, to me a little bit was four or five teaspoon, teaspoons. Um, so I added it in the water and it came back the next day. And my main tap root, let's see if I can swing this around all right, completely rotted off. It was in bad shape and uh, the leaves turned instantly yellow and it was really on its last leg. 
but right now, I mean, check out these roots. They're looking really, really good. And uh, I ended up dumping the water out, putting new stuff back in, and uh, now it's really starting to take off again. So I almost killed it, but we brought it back to life. All right, now you've got some hobbit-sized uh, tomatoes on here. All right, about three weeks ago, I ended up um, adding some uh, ocean water into my reservoir. And um, I was just kind of curious to see what it would do. I was uh, reading an article from Dr. Maynard Murray. And uh, back in the 50s, he, uh, he grew hydroponic tomatoes just using uh, seawater. Basically, what Dr. Murray was trying to say is that the ocean water had 92 minerals in it. And he was thinking if you could add that into uh, your soil or grown hydroponically that um, the fruit or vegetables that you grow with would be, become more nutritious. And basically I was more curious than anything else. You know, I live right on the ocean here. I'm probably a quarter of a mile from the beach. So it was easy for me to get. So uh, I wanted to give it a shot. And so far it's uh, a bounce back. I'll, sh I'll show you some uh, pictures in a second about uh, what this tomato plant looked like uh, when I almost killed it. Really windy, so I got a tide pool here. May 19th and harvesting some ocean water. Let's see how this stuff does. I'm not doing a, uh, this isn't a how to video, I'm just kind of just showing you guys what I'm doing. And um, basically, don't, <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is don't go run down your beach grabbing a bunch of ocean water and just dumping it all over your garden. There's a couple things that you need to do first. First, you want to talk talk to your uh, local marine biologist and, and uh, explain to him or her what, what you want to do. And second, when you collect your water, you want, you want to get the water tested. And you can contact your local state uh, extension office and they'll give you uh, the address and phone numbers to your, uh, your local uh, laboratories so that you can get your water tested. You don't want to be, be uh, you don't want to be bringing home anything nasty to your garden. So, um, so definitely don't run down the beach and grab some water and just toss it in. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, basically, I learned two really big lessons: the importance of maintaining your pH in your reservoirs and, uh, and your ppm's. So, pretty uh, pretty happy I got that under control and uh, didn't kill the tomatoes. And uh, Man, these things are looking awesome. These, for me, are the best growing. Uh, I've never grown tomatoes this good in this early of the year. So I'm really happy, really excited. Uh, this hydroponics is actually making me look like a, a tomato farmer. All right, guys, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just drop them down below. I don't know a whole bunch about this hydroponics or the cracky, but um, I'll do my best to try to answer, answer them for you. But uh, you guys take care. Have a good one.